beautiful set of the evening. I'm gonna have Gunblade hopping on with me. Shippo, uh, it was a pleasure. All right, Gunblade, get your butt over here. All right, what's up, Pierce? What's going on, Gunblade? I see you like to just throw away free tournament sets. No, nah, uh, yeah, we're good. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> All right. All right. So we got Dugan coming from losers, Angel Cortez from winners. This is grand finals, folks. And uh, what a doozy, man. The rivalry, as you mentioned it before. And uh, these guys getting right down to it. Very nice turnaround jab, man. That fox jab so frustrating. One of the better jabs in the entire game, actually. Yeah, for sure. Solid 10% on the second jab after Stelling. Not too shabby. Yeah, Ooh. Angel trying to find his footing, but Dugan preemptively rolling into his positioning. That's really good stuff there. Now, it is always a big mental struggle to acknowledge that you need to find six wins against an opponent that 3 0 you. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, he really has to dig deep going for the fast fall. Oh, no, fair. Wow. Oh my gosh, and Dugan again dropping stocks in a bad situation. Maybe not quite to the Dunkaroo that we saw in the previous games, but you, just, you don't want to give those ones up, especially after he had come in with so much momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Angel turned that terrible situation into literal Christmas, getting a kill while being able to recover. So he must be riding high right now, especially, as you mentioned, coming off a 3-0 on Dugan. So let's see if this puts Dugan on tilt. Yeah, it's very rare to see a tilted Dugan. Yeah. Uh, his style doesn't really leave much room for being tilted because it's very rehearsed, as I've said yes. uh, many times in the past. So it's like, you know, just stick to the playbook. But you have to make sure that you are continuously adapting, especially against an opponent who has defeated your playbook already. Yeah, sometimes you do need to call that audible. And, sure. uh, you know, Dugan might have to dig deep in, into that playbook. As you mentioned, beautiful forward smash covering the entire ledge right there. So Angel will fall 58% on Dugan. Very manageable, but Angel gonna get a nice little combo here. 77 on Dugan, and Angel tries to extend that lead. Now Angel's got his banana, but it's nearly expired. So he's not looking to throw it unless he can get it confirmed. But fortunately for him, that will come out of a block dash attack. And this could be big, not quite. Yeah, Dugan trying to find some offense here. Gets a dash attack, but nothing really coming off of it. And Angel dancing around that banana, feigning that he was going to pick it up, I think, and trying to get Dugan to slip on it. Yeah. Nice confirmed. The banana placement hit into the up air. Not quite going to do it. And one thing I noticed that Angel does not do anymore is really like fish for down tilts when his opponent's at KO percent because you do not need the banana to confirm the down tilt, and the down tilt is relatively safe all by itself. Yes. Like and right there. There it is. Yeah. yeah. As you said, and that's the thing with Diddy, man. He has two placement hits, that detail, as you mentioned, and the banana. Right. So in succession, you can really solidify kills. It's also a good um, timing mechanism, almost right. uh, getting that rhythm and banana detail up smash or whatever whatever you want to do out of it. Right there, Angel skip beat one, went right to two and three, got the KO, so he will take game one here. And we're going to Dreamland. Good counter pick here by Dugan. Yes, however, although we saw the counter pick working in great effect for Dugan, uh, Angel was able to beat here, uh, beat him here two consecutive times in the last game. So Dugan's going to try it again for the third time. But at the moment, we're on good pacing for a, uh, you know, a three-game series again. I like the patience here. Is he going to force some shield out of Angel? He does, but he does not get the up tilt that we were all looking for. Yeah, now nice even punish. though Fox is, oh my gosh, <laughs> even though Fox is really good on this stage, Angel as a player is very comfortable here, and he really likes using Diddy's mobility to set up uh, aggressive uh, positioning, and then he'll turtle with that banana. But right now, Dugan with a nice percentage lead here, and the up tilt to up air combo will take that first stock. I do really like how both of these characters have their own ways of confirming into KOs, uh, giving you a very robust matchup where you can see a much more honest neutral game because neither player wants to overcommit. Oh my gosh, Dugan getting that jab, expecting that side B, but I really, I really would have liked to him, for him to get these nice little soft hits by the edge because when you're hit, you have uh, 40 frames, if I believe, that you cannot grab the edge. 
So nice right. soft hits, try and force Angel underneath the edge, and he can really get a nice gimp or something there. So let's watch out for that situation again. Angel reaching. There's actually Bum uh, of New York fame who popularized that soft hit uh, all the way back in Melee days. Mm -hmm. is, to uh, make the opponent miss the edge, and he, his conversions were immaculate. So it's cool to see how so many players have carried it over uh, so many years later. Yeah, and it's interesting and how the game's two, mechanics. Two games later, yeah. yeah. Good jab once again, and that's that. That's that safe out right there. That jab, you get that confirm and three damage. Oh my gosh, not what I want to see from Dugan that air dodge there. And now this is where Dugan. Uh, hopefully does not freeze up because he's been in this position before where he's on Dreamland, his counter pick, he's had a huge advantage, he gets himself a little bit off stage. Oh, okay, oh my there gosh. He goes. <laughs> a little I scary. I don't, I don't think he's coming back from that. No, either. he wasn't. He went too low. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he wanted it. He was like, no, screw you, Diddy. <laughs> Finally puts himself on the scoreboard versus Angel Cortez. We have ourselves 1-1 one, one in a set, and now this set is anyone's, which means the grand final set could go to either player still at this stage of the game. You know, that win right there for Angel Cortez would have maybe sealed it up. Yeah. Because it would have meant that now Dugan, down five consecutive games, would have to win three games in a row. Yeah, Just an that, incredibly it, unlikely feat. Not only three games in a row, but then another three, like then another best of five after that, being down five games in a row, really hard to do. So that game was probably, I would say that even more than this game, you know, was the game. Yes, because it gets Dugan on the board, man, and and really gives him the confidence saying, you know what, that, that first set, I don't know about that. Let's forget about it, and we're evened up here. This could go either way, like you said. So, And also, just the, his confidence. just the fact that although he lost game one, it's really, really bad to lose game one because you do not have counter pick advantage anymore. But it's really, really bad to lose on your counter pick when you already lost counter pick advantage. Yeah. Because, you know, having to beat Angel Cortez when he's beat you five times in a row on his own counter pick two times mm -hmm. in a row, like, that's hard. Oh my gosh, nice, beautiful detail there. And there's that placement hit going right into the grab. Diddy Kong, so good. Nice side B once again there by Angel. And his offense is really brewing. Dugan trying to get his footing. But that banana really applied a lot of pressure, I think, because it covered the center stage. So Angel was able to shift around it and pressure Dugan regardless if he was on the left or the right side. One thing I've noticed about Dugan, which I will speak to his credit, though, is that he's very good at knowing when it's OK to slip on the banana. You'll notice sometimes he'll take dash attacks, which will result in him slipping because he understands, OK, you know, uh, even though I'm slipping on this banana, I can uh, you know, I, I, I'm still going to land this hit, and Diddy's not going to recover fast enough to hit me. Or, okay, he's just not going to expect to look for a punish if I slip right now because he's not expecting me to slip. So Dugan's really good at making sure that he's in control of his own destiny when it comes to the banana. Oh, man, Dugan read that second hop, but, yeah, but Angel I, got away. He didn't believe in his up air range. Uh-oh, not a grab there. I was very surprised. Not a grab Ooh. here either. Yeah, both, both players kind of a little funky right now. Up throw going to come out to back air. Angel, I like how Angel keeps it simple, man. He, he doesn't try and hit the home run. He gets boom. Just hit singles and you know, the runs will come in. For sure. Those RBIs are sometimes all you need for the game. Yep. Now oh. I'm noticing a flaw of Dugan's that I mentioned in an earlier set is coming back to haunt him here, which is that he does not want to use grabs in his follow-up. Nice. Ooh. Good aerial pressure right there. Yeah, that's a habit Angel has. When he's near the edge and gets popped up, he always air dodges. I think probably one of what we want to see from Angel there was actually uh, a side B away from the stage into an up B towards the mm, stage. Yeah. Because uh, Fox would not have the capacity to pursue him uh, from a far distance. And then Diddy's up B has enough of a mix-up potential that it could have simply just made it back. Mm -hmm. That's very ADHD-like <laughs> from Brawl. Yeah, Wyatt doing a lot of things to innovate the Diddy meta game. I oh. love the aerial command grab from the monkey flip kick right there. Oh, nice. Down smash, too. Reacting to either a regular get up or roll covered both oh, options. Wow, and no tech. Yeah, no tech. I mean, it would have been hard to live from that situation even with a tech. The mm -hmm. peanut pop done was such an annoying setup. <laughs> yeah. Because mm -hmm. like, e like even suppose he did tech, like what does he do? Tech in, he's still getting hit by down smash. Yep. Tech in place, still getting hit. Tech back, he's barely teching anywhere, and <laughs> he gives you enough time to react, which he can still get hit by, say, up smash or something else, which will still kill him. Like everything will kill him in that situation. He's got low percent, uh, I mean high percent at the edge of the stage. A drop through the platform, forward air can still kill him. You know, from a, almost any way he techs. It was a really disastrous situation just for him to get hit by that peanut. 
Yeah, applying so much pressure. And then the, also, as we saw before, the threat of the side B command grab as well with that peanut setup. Yeah. So just layers upon layers of pressure coming out from Diddy Kong in that situation. So being on that platform above Diddy, not where you want to be. Uh, unfortunately for Dugan, he couldn't escape. And Angel Cortez will take game three. Game four coming out of town and city. And both of these characters like this stage. So uh, I don't really see the uh, you know stage choice playing too much of a factor here. I think it's more one of those situations where Diddy is just more flexible on a lot of stages than Fox. Or rather, it's like the, the, one of Diddy's mechanics is more determining what stage we're going to play on. Mm. Because like Fox, while he's good on so many different stages, uh, it's really the banana which we're revolving the game around. So as in this matchup, it's more like, well, where do we want not, where do we not want Diddy to play yeah. more than wh where does Fox want to play? And even with, and on top of that, platform stages really amplify Fox's juggle game with that amazing up air because of the no lag landing on it when right. done correctly. So it's a matter of, you know, where, where do you want to deal with Diddy? And can I get to these platforms to you know, amplify my, my game? But right now, Dugan, he needs to <laughs> amplify this stock if he wants to, you know, at least fight to see another day here. Angel Cortez putting in work, Trump to back air, and he held that option for a while. Yeah. Never really went for it, and this is a beautiful time to bring it out in the potential set winning game here, tournament yeah. winning game. He is on tournament point, absolutely. And the final stock in his tournament, Angel was really, really looking for that grab. Because if he could have <laughs> got Dugan off stage right there, it could have just potentially ended everything. Oh, wow, beautiful banana there. Yeah, I really he, like that. He fainted it, exactly. He didn't want it to land on the stage because it would mean losing control of the banana, but he did want to imply the pressure, and he also wanted to cover the ledge. Oh, my gosh, beautiful roll through there by Dugan. Dugan trying to pick up the banana, but only Diddy can wield this sword. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dugan oh. in a very difficult situation, hopping around on the platform, trying to keep himself safe. Waiting until the stage gives him an opportunity, or Angel gives him an opportunity. Nice fast fall in there. Is going to break him out of that pressure, get him on the ground. But now he has a banana to deal with, and I like how safe he's waiting. But these players are just being allowed to hit each other in these <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah, not really <laughs> defensive situations. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, not sure why they're getting away with this. Very nice. Dash back. Da dash attack to up air. All right. Melee. Yeah, An <laughs> Angel was a little bit afraid of air dodging there with a little bit of a questionable DI. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised we're not seeing more Reflector out of Dugan because you can jump out of Reflector when reflecting an item. Yeah, but you don't want to risk Diddy Kong whipping, especially like if he just throws a banana down and yeah. then grabs There's it. certain distances, though, that Angel is throwing the banana where you can just reactively do it. But, I mean, reflecting a banana is almost worthless because you could just catch it. That is true, too. That's the, that's the best case scenario. Yeah, catching the banana, putting it and in you, you want to just always remain as mobile as possible because the minute you start doing Reflector, if your opponent reads it one time, you're in big trouble. Mm -hmm. And Dugan oh doesn't gosh. have any room to be in trouble. I mean, he's on 121 on his tournament stock. Oh, man, banana that clanking so that out. <laughs> yeah. That was so unfortunate for Dugan. Uh -oh, oh, that, that was beautiful. Super My sweet. God. That was actually a work of art. <laughs> that, was, that was beautiful. Ladies and that gentlemen, Angel Cortez, your Smash 4 Wars 69 tournament victor, taking it over his rival Dugan. Six games to one, completely <laughs> eradicated.